Well, hello, friends. I'm Lee Brown. This is crazy shit in real estate. And my energy level is super high right now because my guest has like a thousand times energy. Krista Mayshore, you might know her from her digital marketing prowess. She's also been a top performing realtor for years. And if you're paying attention to this conversation, you will understand a little bit more about where her drive and determination comes from. So I hope you enjoy this very rabbit holy conversation as much as I did. Enjoy, and I'll see you on the other side. You're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. You'll be amazed at all these wild but true situations that others have found themselves in. Because on this show, you'll hear uncensored, unbelievable stories from the world of real estate. I'm Lee Brown. Let's dive right in. So, Krista, I have to notice your fingernails match your lipstick, and I find that too. Oh, they do. (laughs) It's a dedication to your craft, obviously. (laughs) <laughs> this is I used to wear this color in high school from Wet and Wild. Wet and Wild I lip. Oh, I loved Wet and Wild. Yeah, ninety nine cents. Remember that? Like, and you use that bright color. But yeah, hang on. What was that other cheap brand? It was like New York. Was it New York something? I don't. I don't remember that one. Maybe I'm older than you. It was. A, <laughs> no, I think I'm older than you. But it was an end cap in Mercury's, which was our five and dime in our mall. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. You're so cute. Yeah, I love it. Couldn't afford Maybelline or L'Oreal, but before Clinique came out. Me either. I was in a foster home in high school. I couldn't afford anything. So no what way. Was my jam. Yeah, I haven't lived at home since I was 13. So did that give you a lot of your drive and determination coming out of that background? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah, there was some physical abuse happening in my home with my mom, who now she's amazing. And we're, she's helped me heal. And she's we're, like, I see her a couple times a week. She's the most amazing person. But she had some you know stuff happen when she was younger, which I won't get into her story. But it caused a lot of physical abuse to me. So 13 years old, left home, ended up in ju- juvenile hall for a couple of months, then ended up in a group home for a year, then sent to a foster home. <laughs> so tell me the thing about that experience that, that drive, like, does that drive you at all? Does that, does that drive your foundation? Does it drive your charitable giving? Does it drive where you spend your time? Does it drive how you have become a partner, a parent, any of those things? Like what's all of it. the where do you see it live out loud the most? You know, it's funny because it's been so long and it just like, it, 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 it right? drives everything. It drives, I mean, I'm 50 years old. So it, it drives, it drives everything. And I, like, you know, they say, make your mess become your message. So it's really helped me. Uh, I can't tell you how many people have said, oh, you're successful, Christy, because you're cute. You know, I'm like, oh, you keep thinking that, like kick your butt. Nothing to do with that. I'm, I'm a hard worker. And I just, I think, you know, when you, when you have a physical abuse to a parent, you're always trying to be liked and you're trying to, like, you want to be accepted. You want people to like you. You want to feel like worthy and value. So I think I've always was just trying to prove that I'm good enough by, by my success, if that makes sense. So it was kind of like trying to prove that I was worthy sure. uh, until finally I believed it, <laughs> if that makes sense. And then I've never anybody asked me, but that, that's probably the main thing I would say. But then you land in a business that is full of people who are desperately trying to be liked and they're desperately out there trying to be something they may or may not be because they think they're supposed to be somebody else. Because in real estate, as you know, as a coach, I mean, you see so many realtors that have completely hidden away who they are, what they've been through in their effort to be somebody else. And then they turn really passive aggressive because they don't want to offend anybody or hurt anybody's feelings. And so they won't say what they think and they're non-confrontational. And so it's, but at the same time, it's a wildly competitive business. And the minute you let your clients see who you are, they become the raving fans that they were anyway, but they want to support you. They want to elevate you. And so then you get to be seen once you are who you are, instead of trying to be seen for somebody else. It's a very interesting little chicken and egg thing. And yeah, it I don't is. Know if the public understands, like for realtors, how desperately they want to be liked, how desperately they want to do a really good job, and they get really lost in the details. Yeah, I will tell you what, I real estate is the hardest job I think that there is. And it's so sad because real estate agents are completely, they're not appreciated, right? And, the, and their main reason why they're not appreciated because they're all doing the exact same thing. Like they, and this sounds terrible. I'm going to get this thing this on your show. You can delete it. But I think well, this, is, this is the honest thing, right? Yeah. I mean, if you don't tell people the hard truth, how are they going to learn from it and grow? Yes. I think a lot of agents are paid too much. Like even the ones that are, because they're just doing the same old crap, right? They're putting a sign up, doing broker store, which we all know broker store is a bunch of BS and it only works. It, no one, like people know more about the houses than, than the agent themselves, consumers, because they're like little crack addicts trying to find everything else going on. 
And like open houses, we know, I mean, that's just that that's again for the agent. It helps them meet the neighbors and maybe brand new looky loses, but they're not really qualified or even prepared to buy. There's just so many things. It's such an easy barrier to entry in real estate, right? Like it's so easy to get into it, but you can make so much money as a real estate agent if you do it right. So I just think that I'm going on a tangent, but you that's know, how I, we roll, you know, yeah. you, you said it though. It's easy to get in, but it's really hard to survive. Because oh. a lot of people get in, get the big hip, they got one easy sale, and they're like, oh, I got this. And then they didn't do the deep dive of education. They're not focused on consumer behavior or really focused on the details that go into creating a system. And so they can't really sustain it over the long haul or the ones who get in, never get the big hit, never figure it out, and then vanish out so quickly because it can be an expensive hobby. But the thing I love about the low barrier to entry is that for somebody who doesn't come from a lot of money, they don't come from a heavy educational background, but they are a straight up hustler and they have the discipline to do all the work. You can get into real estate and make a lot of money and have a really great business without having to buy a $300,000 franchise. It's wildly amazing to me. It all depends on the individual though, right? So some people are into the glamour and some are into the business side and it's all over the place. Yeah. It's hard. Like I didn't realize how much I worked until I got out of it. And I was like, Oh my God, I've like worked my life away. I mean, you know, I was closing a, well, the year I left real estate to, to, to be a coach full-time. I had sold 154 houses myself. I had an assistant and a transaction coordinator. And what year and was that? That was four years ago. Four, four seven days ago. a week to do that kind of transaction. Oh, yeah. I, and I didn't realize that my best year, I sold 169 houses. And I didn't realize how much I was working because it's like your phone is always on. People are always calling you. Like I was the mom that was going down the zip line in Hawaii and I'm on my phone and my kids are like, mom, 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 you're not listening. You're not listening. And they're right. I wasn't because I was constantly stressed out because, because <laughs> there was just, it is one of the hardest, hardest jobs out there. If you really care about people and do it, do it right. Because there's so many things that can go wrong. And because so many other agents are inexperienced you're doing their job for them and you've got to be proactive. You've got to be thinking about what they're not thinking of to protect your client and all the other, you know, 18, 25 people that are involved in the transaction. It's just, it is a tough job and it is so lucrative though, if you can do it correctly. It's, it's I'm so a- glad you mentioned that. Like how many agents are picking up the other side of a mm-hmm. transaction that they, they're not getting paid the other person's pay. That person's going to get paid what they're getting paid, but they're doing the extra work because it's the, way they can take care of people and goes Mm -hmm. back to what I was making a halfway joke about, but a totally serious remark about needing to be liked and being Mm -hmm. passive aggressive, which is how people wind up on their phone seven days a week because they can't say no. Mm -hmm. And I know why realtors can't say no. They are panicked that something's going to go wrong or that somebody else is unhappy. And then they wind up letting their own life go into a tailspin because they get so laser beam focused on being the best realtor possible. They let go of the kids and the spouse and the hobbies and the best friends and the life. And then what do you do with all that money? So you had your best year ever was 169 houses without another agent with just somebody helping you, not just somebody that sounds ugly. Our administrative people are ridiculously amazing. So with somebody shoring you up on paperwork, but not in the depth of the relationships. So did you make a lot of money that year and how much of it did you enjoy though? (laughs) <laughs> okay. So that year I did not enjoy it at all. And that was back when I was doing selling foreclosures and I, and like, you know, you'd have to do a BPO and you're like red, green, yellow. And so I was like, ah, and, then, and then you'd, you know, spend two and a half hours on a BPO and then the system would break down. You'd be like, F me. Save like, any of your work because their systems are bank systems. They don't save any work. Oh God. So yeah, I remember that. So it's like, it was, oh, I guess like, about ResNet. You just took me back to my ResNet flashback yes. ResNet with all its stupid little tabs. <laughs> By the way, public, what she's talking about a BPO is a broker price opinion. As a realtor who handles a bank property, we have to do their forms, which are this long, or we oh, have to do their website, which has a thousand little tabs on it. And I'm having straight up stress come into my life right now. Thinking about this thinking of it. anyway. Uh, yeah. So oh I my I'd rather be a stripper in Vegas. I'd make no money than ever have to sell for closure. Skin. Like it was, oh my God, speaking of funny stories, and I, I know you love funny stories. So one time I walk into one of my foreclosures, right? Because you have to check them every, every week. And so sometimes I checked them because it was close to my house. Sure. Walk into this, to my listing. And there's all of a sudden there's like a pair of shoes at the bottom of the stairs. And I was like, hmm. Then I go up and then there's like a shirt. And then I go up a little bit more and there's a pair of pants. And I'm like, what in the heck is going on here? So I go into the master bedroom and there is this 
300 pound man in the shower showering and I, I swear to God, he just had a quickie and he, he, he used the place to have an affair. I, I'm certain of it. And so he sees me and he starts running. Wait, wait. And he's like, puts his towel. He's like running after me. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, it, it's fine. There, there. Yeah, it's fine. And I was just like, oh, first of all, I don't even know why I didn't run. I should have ran, you know, from there. Another, uh, another you thing. You were probably shocked. A 300 pound naked man is not something you yes, won't like, stare at for a while. Yeah, sitting there. I'm just like, oh my gosh. And another time in a foreclosure, you remember how dangerous it was, Lee? Like it was. I mean, I carry concealed and I also carried open in the foreclosure days because I wanted people to know I was armed. Yeah. I mean, it's like one time there was two like squatters living in the attic of course, and they came down with picks. They they had picks and they were like literally going to like they were cracked out. And I was like, hey, you say do what you want to do, you know. I left them. One time I was eaten by this huge like pit bull and I had to go check the house and try to get into it, see if anyone was in there. The craziest stuff happened. At, during Hang on, where was this? this in Tennessee? That's where you're doing foreclosures? No, I was doing it in Northern California. So I live in Northern California and Brentwood. Like I'm in between. Oh, Sacramento. I think you're in Nashville. Yeah, no, I don't know. No, I'm in between Sacramento and San oh. Francisco. In my head, you were in Nashville, oh. but I guess you're oh, a couple yeah. time zones away from that. So, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, yeah. So we should probably clarify, audience, foreclosures are vacant. And so finding the clothing in the naked man is slightly unexpected. And then, (laughs) yeah, that kind of matches the opposite of one of mine had a squatter in the crawl space where they had pulled power over from next door and a hose and and made a clothesline. This is my favorite part. They had power and water, jury rigged, of course. But the most important thing to them was they had strung up a clothesline. They had their clothes on hangers. Oh my gosh, that's so I'm funny. like, I, you're in a crawl space. And, and the police were like, um, what do you want us to do? <laughs> what do you like, mean what I want you to do? Please make them out. <laughs> when you could, but remember then you had to pay them to get out because you, they couldn't get out. I'm going through that right now. Right now I've got a one of my own rentals and the people are not getting, I have to, I have to formally evict them. I'm just like, oh my gosh, the vi- eviction days. That was hard, you know, doing that and knock on people's doors and and I like, know because yeah. you want to believe the best in mankind and you want to help people. But some of the people that we have to evict aren't the best of mankind and they are yeah. not down on their luck. They are not the in the system. people you want to hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. If you are remotely awake, then you know that we are heading into some really tricky economic times. We have home buyers that have put the kibosh on buying. We have sellers who have found out suddenly their houses aren't dipped in 14 karat gold. And as a realtor, you are still trying to keep up with the business you have and trying to answer questions in the meantime, while also managing sky high fuel cost at the pump. Never fear because my new video course is coming out right now and it's called how to dominate during a recession. I've been a realtor for 22 years. My business went up every year during the great recession and it's all because of education This course is four modules. There might even be some bonus content for you. The price is $199. I am delighted to bring this out as quickly as possible because friends, there's no time like the present to make sure our neighbors are stronger and we protect the American dream. Click on this link, www.dominatethisrecession.com and I'll see you there. Now back to this amazing content. So can you evict somebody in California right now? And for friends who might be watching this rando, this is June of 22 when we're recording this. Yeah, you. it depends upon the reasoning. So you can, if you're going to, you can't evict them if they're not paying. And these people aren't paying, but that's not what we're evicting them. We're evicting them because of a family circumstance. My daughter needs a place to stay. So we're oh. trying to get her in, into there. And because of that, we're, we're allowed to evict them. So yeah. It's, oh, so it's, wait, uh, wait, 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 back that up, back that up. So you can't evict them by normal standards, but if you own the property and you want to use it yourself, you can evict them. Yeah, that's that's what our my attorney said. I hired a great attorney. He said, yeah. So, but that's now I've got to go through the eviction process. But you know that goes. You can go. They can go to court. They can tell us, oh, judge, blah blah blah, and then he gives them another six months. It's like, it's just so it's really unfair, honestly, to the to, to the landlord. You know, it really is because everybody I know who's a landlord, if their tenants are down on their luck, man, they dig in and work with them, put together a plan, and help figure it out. The people who, though, cause such a ruckus are the ones who know the laws better than the landlords do. They know exactly what they can do to stay in the property. Like we have a property where the tenant keeps filing bankruptcy because that allows them to stay in the property. And I don't even want to know what that bankruptcy attorney is charging them, but it's things you don't expect. And you really do want to do the best thing for people. Like what we said earlier, realtors like to please people. Yeah. 
So yeah. I want to know something though. So you made a transition from selling a ton of real estate to coaching realtors. What caused that transition and how's it going? And what's, what have you learned in that process? So I have, I was a real estate agent. It's been 21 years now. And I was always in the top 1% of realtors nationwide. My niche was digital marketing. So my niche was digital marketing, social media, using video. And I like didn't do open houses. I didn't cold call, didn't door knock, didn't do any of that. I just kind of, that was attraction-based business. And I just got to a point where I was reading this book, Thinking Grow Rich. And for the past couple of years, people were saying, Christy, you should be a coach. You you should be a coach. I had heard it. You're so inspiring, blah, blah, blah. So I'm reading this book, Thinking Grow Rich. And it's like, you know, the the universe tells you you're calling. And when when it talks to you, you need to listen, but most people don't listen. And so I was like, I'm doing it. Right. So, and it was crazy because I mean, and I was making over a million dollars a year GCI, you know, and my parents were like, Krista, we love you, but normal people at 45 do not leave their current job making over a million dollars a year. And I changed careers. Like we love you, but no one's going to pay you to be, to be a coach. But I didn't, I didn't listen. Right. And I, and I went ahead and did it and it's going great. I mean, it took me, I've been doing it for four and a half years now. I have over a thousand students right now and we do over a million dollars a month in coaching. So before it was a million dollars a year, now it's a million dollars a month, but it took me about two and a half years to become profitable. So the first couple of years I was still selling real estate, right? So my, my team was doing it. My brother, he actually was acting as me and we had a full-time um, TC and a full-time marketing assistant or part-time marketing assistant. And so I was just kind of managing them, making sure that they were kind of keeping things afloat. And so I take the money from there to pay for my coaching and to keep it going. It's hard starting a new business. And a lot of times I was like, why did I do this? Like, this is hard. <laughs> why, did I, why did I change? You know, now, now I used to be a teacher. So I'm doing what I love. I love teaching people. So for me, it's like super fun. So that's, that's the reason why I wanted to change. So let's talk about that for a second, because we know that in a world of, well, not a world, but in a country of 1.6 million realtors and another million who are licensees who mm-hmm. aren't members of the association, there are people everywhere trying to make a living off of realtors who say, oh, well, if Krista can be a coach, I can be a coach. And so I want you to explain why you have reached success and what makes you different and what people don't know about the coaching business that maybe should have them think two times before they hang a shingle out. Because I, for one, get really irritated by the number of coaches in our business that haven't physically done real estate themselves. They haven't lived on a 1099 they don't know what it's like to have to recreate your business all the time. And so they're out there. You're out there. What differentiates you and what should people consider about the difficulty of creating a business out of education? Yeah. So, you know, that saying for those that don't know how to do, they teach, right? Like that's, that's a lot of the times, right? A lot a lot of of them. I, I suck in real estate. I can't do it. So I'm going to teach people how to suck in real estate and how to do it. So I think, first of all, I've done it. I've sold over 2,300 homes in my career. So I've definitely done it. And I'm very relevant and still, you know, involved in, in the, the day-to-day interactions of what's going, ha- what's happening in the market and what, what, what everyone needs. But I have spent like just this year alone, over a hundred thousand dollars, gosh, way more than that on my own personal coaching. So I'm constantly getting coached by the best digital marketers, by the best, and they're not real estate coaches. They're, they're business coaches, sales and persuasion coaches. They're digital marketing coaches, social media coaches, these coaches that to really master marketing. And I think that one of the biggest key components that most agents are missing is marketing. And so I say, be a marketer first and then top producer second, you know, every business, the backbone and the blood of every business is marketing. So we teach them how to market themselves in a different way by adding value. I call it serving, not selling, and just helping the people really, really being community focused and focusing on the community, focusing on helping people, interviewing local businesses, interviewing local restaurants, talking about what's near you know, all the things to do in the town and like really just becoming the face of their city. And then once they then get that client, we also give them, like, I'll give you an example. We, this is one of the things that we give our students. We teach them how to create like a, like a gorgeous, beautiful marketing plan. And just, you know, we really teach them how to be just different than, than their competitors. Um, and just to really give people what they deserve, which is amazing service and great knowledge. And like I was talking about how, how lucrative being real estate is as I taught third grade for six years, I had a master's degree in education and I started out making $30,000 after six years because of my, I was in it, in it about $60,000 a year. Okay. As a full-time teacher, my best month as a real estate agent, I did $360,000 in commission, my best month. Right. So 
there are so many realtors, like you said, like around 3 million ish between the, between the two. And they're all doing the same. They're doing the exact same thing. They're, they're not standing out. They're not educating themselves. So therefore the only thing they're commoditized. So the only thing that they can do is continue to lower their price. But what I, what I have always done in my own personal career, both in real estate and in coaching, and what I teach my students to do is to don't lower your price up your value. Like show you that go. you are Love so that. different. Yeah. Show how different you are. And don't tell show. And when somebody raises their hand to go on a listing, before you even go to that listing, we do like 15 things. We drop off a marketing plan, drop off a seller guide, drop off a 17 minute, you know, marketing video, but all these things to ensure that before we even get there, like we've already won the appointment. And I think right. a lot of agents aren't willing to do that. Well, especially the last two and a half years, this whole sector has been on fire and to Ooh. win a listing has been tricky. And so sellers, a lot of them have decided, you know, I can do my owner because I don't see a value here. And so you got to go back to what we were saying before, where people are paying dollars for the service of a realtor, but what are they getting in return? And sometimes it's like you said, you got to show all the value before you ever meet them. And too many realtors are waiting till they get there. And, and I actually blame some of our old real estate coaching, which always said a realtor earns their keep between contract and closing. And while there may be a whole bunch of pitfalls and things that could go wrong in that time frame, and you definitely work your tail off in that time frame, as the consumer's behavior changes, you're going to have to earn your dollars before you meet the person in the first place. And you don't know who that person's going to be. So how do you prove your value to the whole world? And I think it goes back to what we all click on. Like, what do we watch as videos? Who are we learning from? And if we're just learning from other realtors, that's great. You'll get great information but you've got to go outside of that space. And yeah. I love that you mentioned Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, because that book's from like 1922 or 23 or something. So here it's a hundred years old, wildly relevant, wildly amazing, will totally make you think. And did you read his book? I should have just remembered the name of it. It just flew out of my head, but it's um, it came out posthumously and his wife told him not to. Yes, yes. Uh, the devil book. Yeah, it's the devil. What's the name yeah, of it? Though? I, 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 I actually have the audio. I love it. It's like I the have audio the physical, I like the sniff books, which sounds weird, but yeah. it's really not that weird. It's on my table at home because I've read it a few times and it's yeah. so powerful. So yeah, you should definitely it, get the audio. Write that in the comments. Give us the name of the book in the yes. comments because we, we're very intelligent middle aged women who have forgotten. <laughs> so there we go. You've got to listen to the audio because it's like the devil talking like, in his voice. And oh, then it's different like, voices? It's so cool. Yeah, and he, he sounds all, you know, devilish. And so I, I recommend it. I love all of his books. Like, I What are you I, reading right now? Like, you've read all the big things and uh, you are the coach now. So what are you reading personally? I is can't hear what I'm listening is to right smut I, or business I, business? Oh, no, I don't listen to, to Smut. Well, right now I'm reading Superfans by Pat Flynn. I love Oh my yeah. gosh. I know why you're reading that. Are you reading uh, Derek Eval's book, um, YouTube Formula? No, I'm not reading that one. So like, if you look here, my, you can see my He's book. He's like the life. king of YouTube. And he, te he says in the book that he won't talk to anybody and do an eval or coaching call or anything if they haven't read super fans. Oh, so really? I didn't know that. A really uh -uh. great way to determine who should work with you is will they do the homework? It's a really powerful breed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love reading like 48 laws of power, psycho cybergenetics, think and grow rich, extreme ownership. Pre what is cybergenetics? Oh my gosh. You have got to read it. So this is all about brain science. So it's, here, I'll show you. Oh. So this is about how the brain works. So I'm actually writing it here. See, psycho cybergenetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. Psycho cybergenetics. Thank you. Yeah. Great. So I'm a very big, like, uh, you know, reasons why things happen. And I'm, I'm very huge on mindset. I'm really big mindset focused. I always say mindset is more important than skill set because with a mindset, you could do anything. And I think that's part of the reason why, you know, I've had the success is because I've really had to work on my mind. Like when you're grow up being abused by a parent, it's like you're mentally screwed up. Right. So, so I've had to like completely, so I'm reading all these things and man, the power of our brains and what, what we can do, it's unbelievable. So you just got to keep it positive and believe in yourself. One of the success principles from Napoleon Hill, like strong belief, have a great burning desire and reason why you want to do things and it's like it's amazing what could happen <laughs> have you ever read david goggins book can't hurt me 
Yep, that's, that's on here too. <laughs> yep, you say, right every on. time you say mindset, I'm like, David Goggins is my man. Oh, and yeah. My dream is to have him at one of my events as a keynote speaker. So I'm working on that. He's a beast, huh? He is a beast. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's so hardcore. Okay, obviously we can sit here and ramble around forever. And I would love for you, I, my episodes stay short because we know everybody has ADD. I totally So give them the one thing that, if you're going to succeed in Krista's coaching, what's the one thing you have to be committed to doing? One thing. I know you give them thousands of things, but you know, realtors aren't that focused. So give them one thing. Video. Got to be committed to doing video. And then so if you won't do video, don't spend any money on Krista. But if you will do video, then she's worth every penny, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's more than just video. It's how you distribute it. So you've got to do the video and then make sure it's actually being seen, which is a big, which is a huge part. And I'll just say this. Everybody is afraid of video. They're afraid of what they look like, their sound like, they're going to make a mistake. Are people going to like them? I mean, every, there's every excuse in the book and only the weird people in the world like to do video. Like you might be one of the weird people. I'm sorry if you ask a hundred people. Yeah, we're weird. But I mean, have you always liked to do it? It's like, it's, it was, no, it, it takes a long time. It's like yeah. everything else in life. You have to grow a muscle by repetitions and reps yeah. every single day. Yes. Yes. But I will tell you, I have two multi-million dollar businesses and video is the backbone behind both of them. 1000%. But what's the other one? You got the coaching business. What else is making you all your money? Well, EXP. Well, actually, three. So yeah, I'm on the road. Oh, okay. Not yet, not yet with EXP, but we're doing really great. But my real estate business is, you know, over a million dollars a year in commission. Coaching business is over a million dollars a month, right? And in sales coming in. And both. Video, video, video. It's like, you know, you're winning before you arrive, basically. And, and it just exactly. helps. Yeah. Yeah. Gives you the competitive edge. <laughs> Winning before you arrive. Maybe that can be the title of our episode. So Krista, if somebody wants to reach out to you about all the things that you're doing so they can come learn from you to execute, how's the best way for them to find you? Yes, we do a virtual boot camp twice a month and it's live. And if you just go to kristamayshore.com forward slash boot camp podcast, that's kristamayshore.com forward slash boot camp podcast, then you'll be able to, to attend. It's two days and Actually, it's two and a half days, two and a half days. And it's, it's me teaching it. And it's, we talk all about digital marketing and social media and video and how to really, really have a unique selling, like being unique and different so that you stand out. Awesome. Well, there you go, guys. All of the links to Krista's programs are in the show notes for this episode. I'm sure you've already added to the comments, the books that we couldn't think of and the books that you're reading too. So add that in, give Krista some high fives. And thanks so much for coming on the show. And thanks for actually being a little bit vulnerable at the beginning as we dug into the direction you didn't expect us to go in. So, hey. <laughs> thanks for having me. I love you. I think you're so cute. I love your, your, just your realness and you're so funny. And I just love what you're doing, helping agents. So, you know, kudos to you. <laughs> thanks well, for having me. From coast to coast, that's what we're here for. So thank you friends for tuning in. We'll see you around. As always, I'm so super thrilled that you joined in for more crazy shit. And if you're a realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular human being who happens to have an unbelievable story that you need to tell the world about, or frankly, you just need to one of the story you just heard, then make sure to DM me on Instagram at Lee Thomas. Thomas Brown or tweet me at Lee Brown or frankly any social network where you hang out. I'm there. And if you had some fun, then you totally won't just subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. 